heads up, there's no bub, there's no cat butt in this video. Thank you and you're welcome. Hey, this is Bethany, and today I have returned from a cold sunburn in hell to give you this drugstore tutorial. Uh, basically, I wanted to do a video where I try a bunch of products, uh, all drugstore, and most of them new to me, uh, some of them not as much. But I want to give some first impressions as I try out some new things. So yeah, if you like the way of which my face looks, and uh, you like drugstore or affordable tutorials, and want to see me try and give first impressions of products, most of which are new to me, then keep watching. So here we go. First I'm going to be using my NYX Matte Finish Setting Spray. I just go to this one all the time and it's not a new thing to me. I just like using it. Okay, now that that's dried, I'm going to be trying the NYX First Base Primer. Um, this is just a spray-on primer, so I haven't gotten to use it yet and I have other NYX primers I like. But I want to give this a go today and see how I feel about it, and if I do like it, I'll include it in my favorites later on, so we'll see. Feels just like a setting spray. This is so weird. Feels exactly like setting spray. And for foundation, I'm going to be using one I haven't used in a while. This is Maybelline's Fit Me Matte and Poreless Foundation. I haven't visited this one in a while, but I remember it being a good thing, so let's go. definitely poured too much. And because I'm trying new things, I'm going to be using, in combination with this, Rimmel's Match Perfection Concealer. I believe I see a lot of people use this for their under eyes. Uh, it says it has vitamin C and E in it, blah, blah, blah. And a lot of people have claimed it's pale enough. I'm actually pretty certain I tried this years ago, but the top squeezed off of it. I think this is the one. Um, like, this part doesn't hold on well enough when I try to squeeze out product. But we'll see if they've made an improvement on that. So, whoa, this is pretty pale. Put this all under the under eyes. Okay, so in feeling this, this has a slightly similar consistency to the Maybelline Age Rewind Circle Eraser I use, um, but I think it's not as high of coverage, and it's not as thin of a formula. It's actually thicker, so we'll see how this goes. It is looking kind of bright, maybe a little bit yellow for my under eyes, but let's put on foundation. Okay, so taking that foundation I abandoned for a hot minute, I'm gonna start applying this to my face. I feel like this formula is really fluid. It's not going on looking cakey, and I feel like that is what I remember it being when I tried it out months ago. And I was actually pretty pleased with this. It was just the longevity that I didn't like. Like, it didn't hold up too long. Uh, but it was only like $5.97 at the drugstore, so if you are on a budget and you want a pale foundation for oily skin, this might work for you, but not that long. I'm already looking so much better. <laughs> so I've gone through a big bout of acne recently, all on my jawline. I've been using my blue light device from Trophy Skin, and I've been using it religiously this week to just kind of help clear up my skin. Hopefully, now I can start filming since I've been gone a little bit. I had a lot of things going on, and now I'm ready to crack into it and get, you know, Halloween videos made, so. And for concealer, I'm gonna use something I've never really tried before on my channel. This is the Maybelline Master Conceal I bought a while ago. I wasn't sure how I felt about it. And then also the color is like not human colored. I don't know. So I'm gonna try to lighten it with this because there's no way it's gonna be pale enough, but it's supposedly really pigmented. All right, so it's kind of a pink peach color. It's like one of those Barbies you had in the 90s that wasn't quite the color of a normal person. Uh, <laughs> And it's worked for some people, probably because it's got that salmon tone in it. Alright, so it is a lot lighter right now, so I'm going to apply it to my face. Uh, I'm going to do the touch method first. And then I'm just going to lightly blot it into the skin. See if this still remains kind of full coverage. I mean, a lot of people rave about this concealer, but it just might not work for me. I don't know. Generally, just the tone is my biggest problem. But it's supposed to be a dupe for the MAC Pro Longwear Concealer I've used forever, so that's why I wanted to give it a go. Honestly, this is looking kind of cakey. Okay, so I'm going over that concealing with a little bit of the foundation, because that made it look a little less cakey. Um, and then I need to blend it down the neck. This camera is making it look slightly better than it looks in person. If you have used the Maybelline Master Conceal and had some success with it, let me know. And let me know what kind of skin type you have. Could just be my skin. All right, now I'm going to set my face with the NYX Mineral Set It Don't Fret It Veil. I don't think it's a veil, actually. But I'm using the palest shade. A little bit on my T-zone. 
So now that I'm done with my foundation part of my routine, I want to use this Hard Candy Ultimate Pro Contour and Sculpt Kit. Now this was sent to me by them and I wanted to try it out and just give it a first impressions. Now this is a mixture of cream. So these are cream products on the top and then these are contour products here. So I'm going to dip into this salmon concealer here just to warm it up with my finger. So I'm going to see how this cream just holds up under the under eyes because that's a concern for me. So here's the side I've color corrected on. The salmon's good for like dark under eye circles. It did melt in the skin all right. I will say that this is a little bit like of a hard cream. And so you have, you almost would have to absolutely put your finger into it to melt it. Um, and then I'm going to go over to this one, the yellow. Kind of create some brightness under there. And then also yellow can brighten and correct redness. So I'm just going to use this in some places. Now a lot of people would do color correction first before they do foundation, but Oftentimes with myself, I do not because I want to see if there's even a need for it before I proceed. It does seem to be working though, to neutralize some areas. I do want to try this cream contour on my face, like now. So let's do it. So this set comes with a brush. You've got the fluffier side. It's flat topped, mind you. And then you've got this little dense side that's kind of angled. And that, I assume, is for cream contouring like your nose and things. Or however you prefer to go about it. That's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to be really amused with this. You know I don't typically like cream contours because it reminds me of Nutella. This looks like I'm putting Nutella on my face. And then we're making my nostrils look less wide by contouring the outer sides. Okay, let's see how this goes. I'm gonna fluff this out with the other side of the brush and contour upward on the cheek. So if this wasn't a horrible color match, this would be not bad, but I also have a zit here and it's kind of rubbing on the concealer because I'm using a cream product. It just cracks me up that I put this much on my face, but I got carried away. I started Instagramming basically. I'm going to take my foundation brush and just soften all of this out because right now it's just too much. So once I diffused all these, it looked alright, but I'm not going to lie. I'm not in love with the cream products in this. If you use this, or if you buy this, I would recommend getting some Marajuka oil or something to that degree where you can mix it in with it and make this more fluid because otherwise you're gonna be rubbing on your face a little bit too hard and removing product and so forth. But now I'm gonna use these last two shades. First, I'm gonna lay down an eyeshadow base because I'm gonna use this one like an eyeshadow. It actually looks like a pretty good color. Now I'm gonna be taking a blending brush and I'm gonna be going into this shade and I'm just gonna be laying this down Okay, so far this is not bad. So if you did buy this palette and creams don't work for you either, at least you would have a good transition shade for blue eyes because this would really warm them up. It's making mine stand out a lot. Lastly in this palette is the illuminating shade, which is kind of underwhelming. It's just a satin finish and it's light. So I'm going to use this first as an eyeshadow on my lid, kind of like a base. Then I'm going to put a little bit on my cheekbone and see if it does anything. Barely noticeable and honestly it's like the same shade as me so it's not really brightening anything. Alright, I'm going to go throw on my eyebrows and I will be right back. So that's how I feel about this palette. It was a little bit mediocre for me just because it just personally wasn't a match for me. Uh, but let's move on to the next things that we're trying. Okay, next I'm going to be applying this blush by Essence. You can find them in like Target or Ulta and their stuff is really cheap, like dirt cheap. This is probably $2.49 based on how everything else is priced. So I'm going to apply a bit of this. It's a satin blush called Baby Doll. And this is the first time I'm trying it. And the color looked really pretty, so I was hoping it would work out. I think this would be a good natural shade for a lot of fair skin to medium tone people. So, I'm digging it. And then also from Essence, I got this All About Vintage Eyeshadows palette. And all of these look kind of shimmery, so I was really curious to try them because in the pan they look buttery and when I swatch them they look like they're performing pretty well. So this is kind of a pale pink shimmer satin. I'm going to put this all over my eyelid. And then I'm going to apply it with my finger just to see what it looks like in high dosages. 
so it doesn't show up very much because it's a color close to my skin tone. Let's try a color that isn't so close like this brown. Okay, that's the that's way better. Like that's way less of a letdown. <laughs> that really comes through. I'm gonna put this all over the lid then. Kind of like an iced mocha sort of color. Okay, so that's what it looks like on. I'm just gonna blend this out to make the edges softer. And then I'm also going to go in with this olive green color here on the outer edge of my eye just to see how it pans out. Build it up back here. I'm also dragging some of that hard candy eyeshadow below the eye. I want to add to this eye combo is the NYX Prismatic Eyeshadow in Voodoo. And it is fantastic. It's got like a brown, red, green shift in it, and I'm gonna apply that all over the lid. And this is actually my first time trying it. Kind of reminds me a bit of like a toned down version of that eyeshadow that's in the Manny MUA Makeup Geek palette. Um, but it's definitely more subtle than that one, because that one was a deep green and a deep red combating each other. Just to be a little bit adventurous, I'm going to take this green eyeshadow and I'm going to use it as my inner corner highlight because the green in it sort of matches like the little flecking in this one I just laid down. And I'm going to drag out this green below the eye. I'm also going to bring that lid shade down to the bag of the eye. I went a bit far. I do need to clean this up a little bit more, but for now I'm gonna just line the base of my lash line so I can put on false lashes. I'm adding a bit more green to the outer edge of the eye. So before I pop on my lashes, I'm gonna be using NYX's Slide On Liner in Dark Soul on the waterline. So I'm gonna make this a little bit more vampy than I intended. apply it below the lash line a bit too and then smudge it out with that shimmery NYX eyeshadow. I'm actually setting it on the waterline now too with this eyeshadow because I don't want it to be that red like geez. So before lashes I tried on this mascara it's by CoverGirl called Plumpify and I'm a little underwhelmed by it honestly uh, I have a few more mascaras I like better because it's making my lashes droop. Now I've put on my lashes, I went to my favorites, the Kiss Ever Easy number 11 lashes. They're super dramatic and like va bam and they're really affordable. And then uh, I'm going to put on this NYX Lip Laundry and it's in the shade Embellishment, which I have been trying to hunt down forever and see if it goes well with this eye look. absolutely love this color. It is so freaking beautiful. Here's the problem. This product gets crumbly and crusty on the lips. I've tried it like twice before. It feels similar to a soft matte lip cream, but more fluid. So it's just very hard to get a clean line. Other than that though, it looks so beautiful for about five minutes before it cracks. So to wear this, you either need like a Carmex or a lip gloss to apply to it before it fully dries. And that kind of changes the formula and you know, it's not gonna keep it this matte finish, but it's still that beautiful color. So I'm gonna be using Hard Candy's Plumping Serum Volumizing Lip Gloss, and this is in the shade Cakewalk. Here's what it looks like. I did choose a glittery one, which you probably wouldn't go with in the daytime wear, uh, but I just love the color. But that is what I would do in order to wear most of the NYX lingeries, because even though they're such beautiful colors, unfortunately, the formula just starts crumbling, and this is the only way I've figured out how to stop it. By the way, just wearing this on its own would have been nice, but I didn't want like super dead nude lips. But this gives you like a nude, shimmery, sparkly color. And it's Hard Candy's main plumping lip gloss. Uh, it makes your lips smell like a little bit like a vanilla cupcake, so I really like it. My Alright, so that is my finished look using all of these and then some more different drugstore products. Uh, all in all, it was like a mixed experience because all the stuff I used on my eyes I really enjoyed, but half the stuff I used on my like skin tone didn't. I'm really finicky about a lot of that stuff. So the Maybelline foundation, not bad, just wish it had longer longevity. Uh, and then uh, the Master Conceal, just 
it looked cakey on me. So if you have any recommendations, if you've tried some of those things, if you heard my thoughts and you're like, I totally disagree and here's why, go ahead and put it below because I'm open to hearing it. Um, and then this, I just don't think this was the right fit for me, but if you are a darker skin tone and like cream palettes, more power to you. Um, and then this was actually pretty good, though I didn't get to try a lot of the shades. Most of them are very soft, like the dark ones I tried here. There was just a little bit of fallout. Uh, hopefully you all enjoyed this, like how I just tried most of this stuff. Like a lot of it was brand new to me, never tried before. So if you do like videos like where, like, where I scrounge up all these things I've never done before and kind of give you my first impressions, then let me know, because I typically don't do videos like this. So again, let me know if you want this. So yeah, all in all, I'm pretty satisfied with the eyes and the lips, not so much the rest of the face. So tell me what you thought about the stuff I played with, or if you've tried any of these things and had similar or different experiences, let me know. And of course, if you do like this content, please give my video a thumbs up so I know this is the kind of stuff you all enjoy. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. And as always, thank you all for watching my videos and I will see you next time. Bye.